<clears throat> All right. Well, what's up, everybody? Grim Green back here today. O F R F. People tell me it's pronounced off, so we're going to call them off. And this is the Gear RTA, and it is, you guys, it is a little tiny little flavor banger. I also want to point out that I think it's cool that other people are using the term flavor banger. I mean, I'm not saying I invented it, but flavor banger, it's a thing. And this is one of them. Look at this tiny little RTA. So it's about the size of an atomizer. It's about the size of an RDA. In fact, the Kennedy 25 millimeter atomizer is taller than this gear RTA. Small, small, go away. So we're just going to kind of tear this down from top to bottom and build it as well, starting on the bottom. So not from top to bottom, from bottom to top, I guess. <laughs> but starting here on the bottom here, yeah, you got a little AFC. It's nice and glidy and smooth, but it is real firm. It'll stay without any play wherever you want to put it. You want to rock it full open? It's going to stay in full open. It's not going to have any play on it. Branded there on the bottom, off gear. You got a nice protruding 510 pin, although I don't know why you would want to use this on a hybrid mech, but that is a pretty protruding static 510 pin. On the top, you got that little gear sort of machined on there, and this is where you're going to fill it up as well. It's threaded, and when you unscrew it right here, you're going to see some huge kidney-shaped juice fill holes right there. And if we keep breaking this thing down, we can screw off the base and take a look at that deck. It comes default with a glass, like a straight glass tank, but it also has this polycarbonate plastic tank with the straight glass. They say you get 2.3 mils, so pff, it's whatever. I'm just going to call it 2 mils. And then with the Pyrex sort of bubble glass, Pyrex, what? polycarbonate plastic bubble glass, you get about three and a half mils. I've actually been using the Gear RTA for quite a while, but I've only used it with the straight glass, so today we're gonna be installing the bubble glass. Further into this packaging, you do have two drip tips. You kind of have this smoky one with a little bit bigger of a bore, and then this uh, black sort of Delrin looking one with a little bit smaller of a bore. And you get some pretty standard issue packings. There's some coils for you to use in here. You get yourself a flathead screwdriver tool as well. There is an instruction manual as well as a baggie of spare parts, screws, extra grommets, extra o-rings, and then some, uh, you know, cotton. This is that like shoelace style cotton, right? We're gonna push all this to the side. I'm gonna grab my Aegis Mini because that's what I want to run this on because it's gonna look super cool. So yeah, we're just gonna build this. And if you take a look at this deck, it's got uh, screws on this side, screws on that side. And the reason that they did this, this is a single coil deck. It's got real large wick openings right there. And it's a little bit of a raised deck. And the reason that they did this is so that you can rock a single coil no matter how you wrap your coil. If you wrap it clockwise, you can use these configurations. If you wrap it counterclockwise, you can use the other configurations. Any way you wrap your coil, it's gonna fit in this. So today we're going to be installing this Fiends Fused Clapton. I happen to have one left in here because I used another coil for another single coil RTA. This is a three millimeter coil and I would suggest using at least a three millimeter coil just with the size of these wick holes. I genuinely feel like anything smaller like a two and a half or a two millimeter isn't going to be uh, isn't going to be enough. I think you would not be able to get enough wick in there and I think it would lead to flooding. And the first thing we got to do is get these leads going in opposite direction and that's easy enough to do. So I'm just going to use the included tool to unscrew these two screws sort of, uh, you know, across from each other, diagonal from each other. The screws on this deck have a pretty good travel room. Like, they can come up pretty high, at least enough to get your coils in there. Obviously, if you keep unscrewing them, they're just going to fall out. So I like to take them out as far as I can and then put those coils in there. And this is a three millimeter coil. And yeah, I'm just going to kind of position my coil in there just like that, screw those screws down. Just like that, you screw the screws down, your leads are secured, you can clip your excess wire. I got it glowing real evenly. This came out to about a 0.35, so I've got it set to about 48 watts right now, and I'll probably adjust that later on when we start vaping it. Trim the wicks to size, I kind of just put the scissors right against the base of the deck right here, and I'm gonna leave them a little bit long at first because, you know, you can always remove more cotton, but you can't add more cotton. 
cotton without re-wicking, so I'm just gonna leave it a little bit generous at the moment. Measured the cotton just a little bit more and trimmed it down just a little bit more. And when I'm building an RTA, I don't generally like to thin out the cotton, but what I do like to do is I'm gonna put a little bit of a taper on this. Like, I'm gonna take my cotton and I'm just gonna taper it off. Just enough, I don't know, just to take a little bit off. You can taper it, you can brush these out if you wanna thin your cotton just a little bit, but those, those holes right there for your cotton are pretty large. So I wouldn't make your wick too thin. But yeah, then you can just very, very easily kind of stuff this down into that wick, leave a little bit of room. I like to stick my scissors in there just to make sure that there's a little bit of space between the edge of the deck here and then the cotton, like the hole that your cotton's going into. It just needs some room to breathe in there. All right, well, this is taking far too long. So I'm just gonna juice this up and then we're gonna fill up the tank. All right, boom, there's your gear RTA all put together with a fancy bubble glass on there, fancy drip tip, looking good. Let's get back out to normal view and let's vape this gear. I think that this gear RTA with the red accent on the top and the red accent on this Aegis Mini, uh, that just is a cool, cool ass little looking setup, man. So this Gear RTA, it just vapes so well. It's just such a nice experience. You put a big single coil in there. You got plenty of smooth airflow. Those giant wick holes on the inside really are conducive for some really good wicking. This RTA, no matter how many times I've built it, no matter how many times I've wicked it, it's never done that thing where it feels like it's about to go dry, which is like my number one pet peeve in all of vaping ever is RTAs and sub-ohm tanks that just can't wick. They just can't keep up with the wicking. The gear, the gear keeps up, I mean, flawlessly. I really like the airflow. I really like the size of this thing. And I really, really love the flavor on it. This is a flavor banger in the truest sense of the word. I've got this loaded up right now with, uh, yeah, Lowrider. The Fug Lowrider. It's one of my favorite liquids and it just it just tastes GD delicious in this RTA. It's good and it, and it just performs. It just performs so well. The the fuse Clapton I have in here, it's nice and crackly. It's just it's just almost like an ideal vaping experience from an RTA for me, for me, Grim Green. Your mileage might vary, but I, I love, love the vape experience I'm getting from this Gear RTA right now. I also happen to think this Gear RTA looks super sick on that Inokin Chroma A kit. I, I try to use this Chroma A whenever I can. I rock it with my uh, K-Fun Light Plus all the time, any other little flavor banger RTAs or RDAs. I, I just love the way it looks on here. And honestly, this like uh, plastic bubble glass on the gear RTA bothers me zero, which I I've never had a bubble glass not really bother me. This one, I think that looks pretty slick, honestly. And then there it is on another little mini mod. This is the Wake Littlefoot. That just looks, I don't know, that looks awesome. I, I love that. I even like the purple and the red, even though they contrast a little bit. I kind of really like that. This is made, this little RTA is made for just slick little mods. And the vape that I get from it is so good. It's just a quality, quality vape. I genuinely have nothing to gripe about with this little RTA. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a small RTA, so it's got a small juice capacity, but that's kind of the trade-off for having this small of a little flavor banger RTA is that you're gonna have a smaller juice capacity. If it were bigger and it had more juice capacity, then it wouldn't be this little cool RTA. So it's just, 
kind of something you're gonna deal with. It is a little bit of a restricted type of lung hit. It's still, it's still quite open. I was surprised, honestly, at how open the airflow was on this, because when I see little RTAs and little tanks like this, I think, oh, well, that has a real restricted lung hit. Like, I'm thinking, like, K-Fun 5 or, like, Goblin Mini V2, where it's, like, a real restricted lung hit. And comparatively, even as restricted as this is, it is a little bit open. It, it's, it's a real nice, uh, I don't know, real nice middle ground between like real, real open airflow and like real restricted. This is, this is somewhere right in that nice meaty part of the curve in my opinion. Real quickly, I just want to mention that I set up the black one just because I thought it looked really cool, but it does come in a, a multitude of other colors and finishes. There's, there's a gold one, a stainless steel, a blue one that looks real sick, as well as the infamous rainbow color for all of the rainbow people. And all the finishes genuinely look pretty rad. So, <sighs> Let's get down to brass tacks, as it were. Are you gonna need your vape budget hands if you're looking at the off-gear RTA? No, not really. I've seen it around the internet anywhere from like 34 to 35 bucks, which is not really in vape budget hands territory. That's almost in the territory of it's cheap enough if you wanna buy it just to try it out. Now, if we're going to play the Aliens game or the FDA game where they come and take everything I have, and I have no vape gear at all to vape, is the gear RTA something I would seek out and buy right away? Yeah, I mean, for 35 bucks, this tiny little easy to build, easy to wick, wonderful vape, little flavor banger RTA, yeah, this is something I have a feeling that's just gonna stick around just for a long time. I have so, so thoroughly enjoyed this tank that I just want, I just want to keep using it. It's a stellar little flavor banger. Okay, I'm done here. That's enough gushing about the gear RTA. Links aren't allowed in the description, so you're gonna have to use your Google Foo, but it is available over there on Vapor DNA. Anyway, that's what I got for today, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me, and as always, let's keep on vaping. <laughs>